Hey guys, this is Matt with Fabricator, and in this video I'm going to go over the Kiss Slicer program that comes installed on your 3D printer. Kiss Slicer is a program that allows you to take STL design files and turn them into G-code files, which can then be printed on the SX. You can open Kiss Slicer either from the icon on the desktop or from the taskbar below where it's pinned. To open an STL model, go to File, and then down to Open STL Model or click open in the upper right hand corner of the program. For this video, I'm going to open one of the provided STL models from the sample STL files folder on the desktop. And I'm going to use the six inch roller file from the mechanical and structural samples folder. Once a model is open, use your mouse to navigate around it in the view window here. By holding down the right mouse button and moving your mouse, you can rotate around the model. Using the center scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out. And by holding down the left mouse button and moving the mouse, you can move around two-dimensionally from your current perspective. Along the right side of the window, all your currently opened STL files appear. From here, you may change the number of your object that you wish to print. Also, you can control the object's rotation on the bed. By right-clicking, you can reveal additional commands for your STL model. Open a drop-down menu by scrolling down to Transform Mesh. And from here, you can change the orientation of your object. You're able to mirror each individual axis or flip your object upside down and to return your model to its default position simply click on restore original orientation by clicking on scale by x you can multiply the size of your object by whatever number you type in there and again clicking restore original orientation will restore your object's size as well Entering numbers smaller than 1 will make your object smaller. Changing the height in millimeters here will also scale your entire object. Now I'm going to open up the settings and mention a few important details before I cover them individually. Only the settings on these first three tabs need to be altered when using Kiss Slicer. This includes the Style, Support, and Extruder Map tabs. The other tabs contain settings which are standard to the Fabricator 3D printers. Changing some of them could result in recurring failed prints. Secondly, anytime you change a setting in Kiss Slicer, that setting is saved even when you exit the program and open it again. As you can see, this 10 will remain rather than returning to its default setting. As a result of this, I recommend changing any settings back to their original state after slicing a G-code file. This is especially true if you are changing a setting just for experimentation and you're not sure of what the results will be, or if there are a lot of people using the printer and some of them may not understand what all the settings mean. The Style tab contains a single drop-down menu from which you choose your layer thickness and infill settings. Layer thickness represents the size of a single layer printing up from the bed in millimeters. For this, you can choose between coarse, medium, and fine. When I choose between the three options, you will see the layer thickness value change accordingly from 0.25 millimeters to 0.17 millimeters and then to 0.125 millimeters for fine. A finer layer thickness setting will extend the print time, often by a significant amount. The choices of infill range from solid to hollow, with two semi-filled options of medium and low. Medium and low infills are created by printing a pattern within the object to support the upper layers. When choosing the different infill options, you will notice this sliding bar labeled infill changing below. This percentage represents the solidity of the inside of your object, with solid being 100% filled, 
medium being 25% filled, and low being 10% filled. Your infill setting can also drastically affect print time. To set a filament type for your model, click on the tab labeled EXT Map, which is an abbreviation for Extruder Map. Since the SX has a single extruder, only the first drop-down menu is available. To choose a filament type for your G-code file, simply click on the menu and then choose the filament type you wish to use. The filament you are going to use must be chosen here. Temperatures cannot be changed later in the Fabricator program during a print because the program will follow the temperature commands embedded in the G-code file. If you wanted to print a single design twice with two different filament types, you would have to slice two separate G-code files with this setting changed accordingly in Kiss Slicer. Before covering the support settings, I'll run through a quick example of the entire process of creating a G-code file requiring no support. With Kisslicer open, I'll first hit open and choose my STL file. After opening the file, I'll choose the style settings. For this, I'll use coarse solid. Then I'll choose PLA as the filament type in the extruder map tab. Lastly, I'll go into the Support tab and make sure that support is turned off. Now to create the G-code file, I'll click the Slice button in the upper right hand corner. In the window that opens, I'll choose a destination for the G-code file, which will be the desktop. It is best practice to name the file with the settings used in order to keep track of your G-code files. So for this one, I'll leave 6-inch roller, and then I'll add coarse, solid, PLA to the title. And with that, I'll hit Save, and Kiss Slicer will go through the process of creating the G-code. When it's done, the time that the print will take appears in this white box along the right side. The resulting G-code file is here on the desktop to be opened in the Fabricator program and printed. To go over the support settings, I'll open up an STL file that requires support. In the Artistic Samples folder, there's a print called Lucky Elephant, which requires support material. For this print, I'll use a coarse medium style setting, and then again I'll print it with a PLA filament. Now clicking into the Support tab, I'll first turn on Single Material Support. This sliding bar controls the support density, with six choices ranging from coarse to ultra. A denser support setting will be tougher to remove from an object, so it is best to use the lowest density possible for your print. To the right is another sliding bar which controls the angle which is required on a model before support is added. So in other words, if you imagine a straight line up and down over the model, 90 degrees would be a straight line directly to the right, and a 45 degree angle would be directly between the two. With the sliding bar currently set to 45 degrees, support material would not be added until an angle of 45 degrees or more occurs on the model. A 3D print can usually handle an angle of up to 45 degrees without requiring support material. This parameter can be changed to anywhere between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. So at this point, I'll slice the elephant print and go over another cool feature of the Kiss Slicer program. After a model is sliced within the program, you can use this button labeled Models and Paths at the top to actually take a look at what the extruder will be printing at each layer. 
Using the bar along the right side of the view window, you can actually scroll through layers of the print. This way you can review where support is being added to the model. To demonstrate, I'll turn the support angle up to 87 degrees and show you how it changes the elephant print after slicing again. As you can see, support is now only being placed in the center of the elephant where that 87 degree angle is being reached on the model. So now I'll turn the support angle back down to 45 degrees and reslice the elephant so I can print it on the SX and show you the results with these settings. Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to contact us with any questions or concerns about your 3D printer.